Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I wanted to do this little video on comparing the up mixers for Dolby Atmos, for Oro 3D, and for DTS X. I know there's been a lot of chatter on some YouTube channels like Joe Intel and others where they have this thing where they think um, they're getting better sound by taking a native Atmos mix down mixing it or downgrading it to 5.1 or 7.1 and then re up mixing it to Oro 3D. And you know, you guys could do whatever you want. Whatever you think sounds better to you is fine, but I just want to kind of go over the mechanics of of what this is all about. Before we get into the topic on on or the controversy on mixing or down mixing or cross mixing, I want to just analyze these up mixes just in their two channel form. What do they do to two channel music? In other words, if I play back a high resolution recording and I up mix it with all of my speakers in this room, I'm currently running a 9.4.4 system, which means I have nine bed layers, although my wide channels are in the ceiling with 30 degree angled baffles firing at the listening area further apart than the mains. I did that because I didn't want to have more speakers on the floor. And it actually works out really as a good solution for wide channels. And then I've got four Atmos channels. So I want to talk to you guys. I want to give you demonstrations, taking two channel and up mixing with the three different up mixes. I'm going to let you listen. Obviously, I'm not using an ideal microphone. I'm not using a binaural recording. But I think you can kind of hear the tonality of what's happening between the different up mixers. And I want you to listen, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I'm hearing and see if you can kind of get that representation through this microphone. Now, this is a near-field microphone, so it may not pick up all the details, but I'm doing the best I can. I'm not Joe and Tell, okay? I'm just here for the knowledge to show you guys what I'm hearing based on the science of how these things work. So let me share my screen, and I'm going to go into the Storm processor. And one thing I love about the Storm processor is the fact that I could turn on and off any channel I want. I don't have to go behind a speaker to disconnect. Uh, this is the big leagues, guys. If you haven't seen my review on this piece, please check it out on our homepage. Um, it's just incredible. So I'm going to turn off all the main three channels, and we're just going to play. We're just going to play the surrounds and the heights, okay? And then I'm going to put on. A recording from Dominic Fee M.A. Because she's got very high quality recordings. The one thing I really like about her recordings is they do well in up mix because she's done so many different tracks just for the layering of her vocals. And it comes in really great if it's up mixed properly with a good up mixer, of course. So let me get this going. The song is going to be Birds. I'm probably going to get copyright notices about this. But you know what? In the name of science, it's well worth it. So let me hit the play button. We're with Dolby Surround right now. Again, the front three speakers are off. Now, let me pause for a second. And what I'm hearing is a lot of ambience. I'm not hearing her direct vocals, but I'm hearing percussions in the back and it's switching between the back channels and I'm hearing some different instruments on the other channels. It sounds almost discreet. It really is convincing. Let me keep playing because I want you to hear what happens with the layer of her vocals when it comes through. Did you hear how loud those layered tracks came in from her voices? I'm going to try to rewind a little bit of this and play it now through the Oro up mixer. So we're going now to Oromatic. 
It started over, damn it. All right. So the sound of the birds taking off scared you last night. Now, what I'm hearing is every speaker has her voice. So to me, this sounds like 11 channel stereo, only it's filtered. There's not a lot of high frequency detail, much less high frequency detail than what I hear with the Dolby up mixer. I'm going to switch back to Dolby again. Could be right. Could be right on. Now I hear the layering of her tracks. I hear the snapping much more pronounced. Go back to Oromatic. And now everything sounds dead. All I hear is her vocals. I don't hear the snapping sounds anymore. Very in the background. Go back to Dolby. I hear the brustling in the back. I hear the instruments placed around me. Listen to that layering of her vocals. Go back to Aromatic. Sounds like 11 channel stereo with a low pass filter on the high frequencies. Lots of bass though. Go back to Dolby. Okay, now I want to, you heard the difference between the Dolby Up Mixer and the Oromatic. What I was hearing when I was in the Dolby Up Mix, the DSU, is yes, the surround speakers were not on all the time. I was hearing a lot of ambience of the recording that's in the recording itself. But when I heard that snapping sound she was making, they were super transient. I heard them from the right and left side channels and the effects in the back channels and the tops were just given more ambience. But then when she layered her tracks, when she layered her vocal tracks, the, the surround speakers came alive and I felt immersed in the recording. As opposed to when I put on the Oromatic, I heard her vocals in every speaker almost all the time. And there was like a low pass filter. I didn't hear any of the high transients I was hearing with the Dolby Up Mixer. So yes, there was more sound, but it sounded more like 11 channel stereo then I was listening to a good up mix of a two channel recording. So here's something interesting. I want to play you now the difference between the Dolby up mixer and the DTS up mixer. And as you guys know, I am not a huge fan of the DTS up mixer, the DTS X up mixer for two channel, but you're going to see, I'm actually a little bit surprised about what I'm hearing here. Cause I never really isolated the surround speakers before without the fronts playing. So let's listen to this. Now I'm going to start with the Dolby and then we're going to go to the DTS. And now we're going to go to DTS. Thank you. 
Switch back again to the Dolby. Let's go to DTS. So what's interesting about this is, and I wasn't expecting this, DTS actually has a lot of detail with the up mix. Like I could hear the placement of the instruments were a little different than what I was hearing with the Dolby. I heard that snapping sounds more from the side channels with Dolby, whereas with the DTS X up mix, I heard it more from the back and it was very detailed. And the vocal, the layering of the vocals were actually more in your face. You could really hear it. But I was hearing a lot of artifacting while I was doing it. I was hearing a pumping sound. So it would it would like get quiet, then all of a sudden it would just kind of charge up and it didn't sound natural. So there was some artifacting that I heard in the DTS X up mixer that I didn't hear in the Oro up mixer, and I didn't hear it in the Dolby up mixer. But the thing is. The DTS X up mixer was very close to how it how it extracted those layers of the vocals to what Dolby did, as opposed to what the Oromatic did. Was it just played the vocals in every channel? Now there were none of them are perfect. Okay, so there was a couple of times where I heard the bass hitting and it sounded like the woofers were bottoming out. That wasn't the woofers bottoming them out. That was just general up mix artifacting. You're going to get that with any up mixer. Up mixing is not a perfect solution. That's why if you have the chance and you have the choice to go native and it's an immersive mix, I always recommend for the very best fidelity to always stay in the native format. Don't down mix and then up mix to an up mixer because you want to hear your surround speakers more. So I didn't even, you know, thinking about this, I didn't expect the two channel up mixer for Oro to just throw the same content in all the channels at the same time. I was surprised because all of my listening tests I've ever done comparing the up mixes, I've had all of my speakers on all of the time. So whether I was listening to Dominique or I was listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers or Pat Metheny or Porcupine Tree, or you know, anybody, anytime I went between the Dolby up mixer and the Oro up mixer, I usually preferred the Dolby up mixer because I just felt like I could hear the transients better. And I felt like I, that sounded more like a discrete recording to me than when I put Oromatic on. Oromatic was impressive because it just had a lot of sound. And yes, I did hear a little bit more bass with Oromatic. Not to say that that's accurate though, because it, you know, everything sounded properly balanced with the Dolby up mixer. And the DTS X one, I always thought it had potential, but the thing that I don't like about the DTS X, they went a step backwards when they went from when they had DTS music mode and cinema mode before they did immersive surround sound. They don't have a center spread feature. So with Dolby, if you don't turn center spread on, then all of the common information between the left and right speakers are going to be dumped into the center channel and you're going to lose the sound stage of your main speakers. And it sounds terrible. That's why I think so many people think the Dolby up mixer is no good and that the Oromatic is better. It's because they don't properly configure the um, DT or the uh, Dolby up mixer. And I probably should do a video just addressing that problem. So when you turn center spread on and use the Dolby up mixer, you should still get a very good stereo image, image from your main speakers and then all the other channels should provide an ambient fill with some effects. And that's what I'm hearing with that. When I put on the DTS X up mixer, I hear a lot of the detail out of all the channels, but everything gets dumped to the center channel and I don't have good soundstage from the main speakers. So if DTS could get their act together and they could update their up mixer and they could give us the option of a center spread, I think they can go a long way and they could be a good, really good up mixer because there's a lot of potential. But as for Oral 3D, I think it's a big hype machine. You know, I think the company is desperate because they don't have much software. They don't have much market penetration. So there's people that are saying that it's a better up mixer when I don't see it. In fact, every professional I've ever spoken to that sets theaters up for a living, nobody's ever told me I'm going to set up the system just, you know, to tailor towards Oro. They set it up for Atmos. They set it up with the height speakers in the ceiling 
and everybody is setting up for Atmos because that's where all the software is. But aside from the software issue, I tried many times to like Oral 3D upmixing better than Adobe upmixer, and it just didn't happen. And if you, I hope you could hear what I was hearing through this microphone. I know it's limited. I don't like doing listening tests on YouTube. But all I'm telling you is when I listen to two-channel music, Oro sounds like 11-channel stereo. It doesn't sound like it's upmixed with discrete surround sound like I get with the Dolby upmixer. So anyway, there's that. You know, you guys are free to do whatever upmixing and downmixing and crossmixing you want. I'm here to just show you what's going on with these processes. In the future, I might do another video that shows the channel mapping because the Storm Audio can show you all the outputs uh, when, when things are live. I think if you guys are interested in that, I'll do that. The other thing I wanted to mention too is if you are considering down mixing a native Atmos upmix or native Atmos content, I think you're really doing yourself a disservice if you don't listen to the native Atmos, especially if you're running wide channels, because once you down mix, you lose the wide channels. In most cases, you lose the, the back channels too. You can get the down mix could only be 5.1. So you're going to lose a lot of discrete content. You're going to lose the objects just so you can up mix and hear your surround speakers all the time. If that's what you want, if you want to hear the top speakers firing all the time, you could use the Oromatic up mixer, or you could turn it to two channel and have every speaker on equally at the same time. I don't like that. That's not for me. But if that's something you like, or if you want to impress people with sound in your room, be my guest, all power to you. I just wanted to show you what I was hearing and the differences between these up mixers. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And I hope everybody has a great holiday. And at the end of the day, we're all friends. You know, we all have different opinions on things. I hope you find what I'm doing here useful. I hope you find what Joe Intel is doing useful. And then you guys make your own educated decision on what works best in your situation. With that said, until next time, my friends, keep listening.